Hello again. All right, this is our last video for seeing light. Um, so, recap. First video was breaking down the eye, the different parts. So we have the retina that's at the back of the eye. We have the cornea, which is at the front of the eye, the protective sheet. Um, then we have the color part of our eye, which is called the iris, which is the area like the shutter that opens and closes, allowing light into the eye. The pupil, which is kind of like the portal for it to go through, the light goes through to the eye. It goes and gets focused with a lens that's right behind it. But it, like I said at the end, or at the beginning of this, it's going to hit the retina, which is at the back of the eye, um, and that will actually help the eye to then change all the information into like a data to send to the brain, but with the help of the rods and the cones. Okay. The rods will help you to pick up the black, the white, and the grays in, a, um, in an image that you're looking at. Uh, rods also help you to see light that is very dim and dark. Cones are the part of the eye, the, re the receptors that will help you to pick up color, so the visual light spectrum. Uh, so it's going to pick up the reds, the blues, the greens, all of that. We also talked about how if a cone is defective, that's kind of how uh, we've come across people who are colorblind. Um, it's not that the cone is not there, it's not that it's not working, it's that it's only picking up one or two of the colors. Uh, and so because of that, they're not able to see all the colors that's present in the visual visible light spectrum. Uh, it's just they're only picking up one or two of the primary is, primaries, and the one that they can't see is actually going to look like black or dark gray. It's going to be very hard for them to see. Kind of like if you were to shine a green light on a red apple, you would only see the red, the green stem. You'd see like this black apple. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at uh, when the eye is when the light is coming into the eye. It's getting focused. The focal point is at the back of the eye on the retina on that. Um, that light sensitive lining that'll help absorb and trans transmit information to the brain. The only problem is depending on how the eye is shaped, the focal point might not be in the right spot. So now that's what we're going to be looking at now. Okay. So we have correcting vision. We were looking at concave and convex lenses previously. Um, if you look back to your notes I have to refresh myself even um, concave lenses are the ones that are thicker in the middle and then the edges it'll be skinnier whereas a convex lens is going to be thinner in the middle of the lens and thicker on the edges okay concave lenses will be used to correct those with nearsightedness nearsightedness means they can only see up close they can see near um, everything else far away, it's hard to see. Convex lenses, where it's thinner in the center, is going to be used to correct those with farsightedness, where it's very hard for them to read stuff up close, to see something up close. They can't see very, they can't see very well stuff up near, so they can see far very well. Okay? Main one that I personally connect with is nearsightedness. I grew up with nearsightedness and I had poor vision up until about a year and a half ago when I had some eye surgery. So I now can see. <laughs> uh, but however, some of you might know someone who wears glasses because they can't see far away. These people, like I said, are nearsighted. In this case, it's kind of silly, but their eye is actually just a little too long. The focal point is not hitting the back of the eye, it's hitting the mid part of the eye which causes everything far away to seem like it's very, very blurry. Now, if they have, let me click over, if they end up getting that concave lens in there, it'll redirect the light so that way it can push the focal point further back in the eye. So this is why the middle of the lens is going to be skinnier because it's going to scatter up and out. And then once it hits the lens in the eye, it's going to redirect it back into the eye. However, this is all determined like what's how skinny this lens is going to be um, when you go to an eye doctor. They can tell you exactly what size you would need um, based off of all their exams and tests they do. 
But for a nearsighted person, they do have to have this concave lens in order to redirect the light to hit the outside edges, the top and bottom of the lens in the eye to send it back further, okay? Now, we're gonna look at farsighted. Those are the people who can't, they have a really hard time reading up close, reading books, reading screens, painting, <laughs> doing something really up close, okay? Um, they can see pretty well far away. Those people, most of the time, they have an eyeball that is really short, really kind of squished in. Um, because of that, <clears throat> if you look at our image here, the focal point is actually behind the eye. It's more like almost into the, the nasal cavity, the brain area of the face. So it doesn't quite connect to the retina very well. For this, they want you to, or not they want you, but it would be better to have the convex lens where it's thicker in the center to get a more, it squeezes the, the, um, the ray lights together because it's trying to make them create a new focal point and it'll actually put it to the back of the eye and actually hit the retina. Just like with the other one, uh, it's instead it's gonna have it hit more of a center part in the lens here rather than like more of an outside edges that it had up here. So it's gonna narrow where the focal point is uh, to make it go further back and reach the actual inside of the eye rather than how it was up here where the focal point was behind the eye okay so main thing nearsightedness is gonna have a concave lens where it's thinner in the center to kind of scatter those light rays outward a bit more to hit the edges of the lens to send it to the to further back in the eye because the eye is too long farsighted where the eyeball is too short the convex lens where it's thicker in the center is gonna cause the focal point to narrow a little bit and bring it in closer to actually hit the back part and the inside of the eye, okay? So concave lens for nearsighted, convex lens for farsighted. And that will be it for our seeing light section. I have already gone over how nearsighted and farsighted are corrected, but what I want you to do is to tell me how does nearsighted in the eye differ from farsighted in the eye? So how is nearsighted different from farsighted in the, in the classroom?